the classification of genetic disorders. After talking about the chromosome structure and their classification, let us talk about the overall genetic disorders which are there. When we classify genetic disorders, they can be classified into various forms. The first way of we classify them are the obviously chromosomal disorders. Chromosomal disorders can further be divided into chromosomal disorders with abnormal number. We call them as aneuploidies or there can be abnormal size and shape as well as abnormal structure. The second category, we will be talking about chromosomal disorders in details. Second category are the single gene disorders. So, Down syndrome is aneuploidy that comes in chromosomal disorder, right? So, single gene disorders. Single gene disorders will usually arise due to single gene mutations, for example, cystic fibrosis, for example, uh, sickle cell anemia, where there is a single point mutation or some mutation happening and creating the disease. Single gene disorders are also called as, they should tend to show Mendelian disorders, they show Mendelian inheritance. So, all these Mendelian inheritance patterns which we will discuss in some time which you already know autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive, they all show Mendelian inheritance, they are seen predominantly in single gene disorders, they are described for these disorders. The third category are the polygenic disorders. Polygenic disorders are also called as multifactorial disorders. Polygenic or multifactorial will not have a single gene, multiple genes, each one contributing and sometimes there may also be role of environmental influences. So, polygenic or multifactorial inheritance is typically seen in patients with neural tu tube defects. It is also seen in some other disorders which we will be compiling separately. And the fourth category are the non-Mendelian genetic disorders. They are atypical genetic disorders. Earlier, the term atypical was used, that term is no longer used, it has been discarded. So, non-Mendelian genetic disorders, what are the conditions included in this? This will include gonadal mosaicism, also called as germline mosaicism. It includes mitochondrial disorders. From entrance point of view, mitochondrial disorders is the current hot topic for your entrance exam. Then it includes genomic imprinting and it includes trinucleotide repeat disorders, trinucleotide repeat disorders. So, this is the classification that you need to remember. First of all, let us start with the chromosomal disorders. When we talk about chromosomal disorders, the classification can further be made based upon whether it is abnormality in the number or abnormality in the structure. So, first is the abnormality or disorders in the number, they are called as aneuploidies. So, abnormal number of chromosome, if there is, it is not 46, any change in that is there, that is called as aneuploidy. Aneuploidies are, can be of many varieties, there are two common ver versions, first of them are trisomies, right? Trisomy will be extra chromosome, one extra chromosome of that particular chromosome appearing. For example, trisomy 21, when we say trisomy 21, instead of two 21 chromosome, the person has three chromosomes. And second is monosomy will be seen in uh, some patients of Turner syndrome. Then you have disorders of the structure. In disorders of the structure, the overall number will be same, but individual structure can be changed. The first variety is translocations. Translocation means shifting of the genetic material. There can be further two types of translocations. There can be balanced translocations and there can be inverted translocations. Then you have inversions. Inverted translocation is a different thing, inversion is a different thing. Inversion basically means the gene sequence gets changed. Suppose you have a chromosome like this, right? This is the chromosome and this particular gene was present, gene A was here, gene B was there. Something happened and now the chromosome is same, but now B chromosome is here and A is here. 
this particular segment we will say it has undergone inversion. So, inversion means shifting or 180 degree turning of the particular genetic segment. It does not involve the entire chromosome, a particular segment of the chromosome is involved. Third is deletions. Now, deletions are very important, deletions are very frequently seen. There are common deletions, large gene deletions are incompatible with life. But micro deletions occurring in specific chromosomal locus produce a lot of disorders. So, deletion you can remember many of them which are compatible with life are micro deletions. And accordingly, we have micro deletion syndromes. A common micro deletion syndrome is Di George syndrome. Which of the following is a micro deletion syndrome is your neat super speciality MCQ? So, please remember there is a complete list we will be discussing later. So, Di George syndrome. Di George syndrome, if you remember, it involves micro deletion in 22Q11.2, right? Second micro deletion syndrome is Williams syndrome, where chromosome 7Q11 is involved and micro deletion occur. Other than that, there is a long list which includes Rubinstein Tybee syndrome and uh, a, a whole host, uh, Prader-Willi syndrome subvariants can also have micro deletions. So, these are the micro deletions that you need to remember. Another fourth variety of disorder of chromosomal structure is duplication. The same gene may become duplicated. So, see, a particular gene, if it is present in two forms. If there are two copies of it, it may not be causing any problem. But if three copies start to exist, then it may start producing problems or disease may be produced. A typical example of that is a gene called as APP gene. If you remember, APP gene is present on chromosome 21. APP gene is responsible for Alzheimer's disease. And it is seen that certain Down syndrome children, when they have three copies of chromosome 21, they also have three copies of APP gene. That is why Down syndrome has early onset Alzheimer's disease. There are other patients who do not have Down syndrome, but still they tend to have duplication of the APP gene. So, any patient, suppose if I am that person and somehow due to my bad luck, I do not have Down syndrome anything, but there was duplication of APP gene on chromosome 21 on the same chromosome two copies were created. So, what is now happening? One chromosome has one copy, another chromosome has two copies. So, because duplication happened, now three copies of APP gene are present and so I will develop Alzheimer's disease earlier, more severe than others. So, duplication of particular genes can cause particular disorders. Moving to ring chromosomes. Ring chromosomes are just the name itself says they are like a ring. Whenever there will be cutting or uh, of the chromosome or there will be deletion at the end of chromosome, sometimes sticky ends are produced and P and Q chromosome, they can be joined to each other producing the ring chromosome. Multifactorial or polygenic inheritance comprises multiple set of genes, each having an additive role, an additive role. Leading to the production of disease manifestation. There is also a role of environmental influences and epigenetic mechanisms. Epigenetic mechanisms are those which affect the expression of a particular gene. So, multifactorial is not simply identified or not simply explained by the usual Mendelian inheritance. Multifactorial inheritance is commonly seen in conditions, the common conditions which are asked in exam. First, it is seen in neural tube defects. Secondly, it is seen in cleft lip or cleft palate. It is also seen in type 2 diabetes mellitus. It is seen in congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, also called as idiopathic hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, CHPS or IHPS. And finally, it also occurs in many forms of congenital heart diseases. So, these are the common conditions on which questions can be asked which show multifactorial or polygenic inheritance. 
if you look at past papers uh, neural tube defect and cleft lip and cleft palate have already been asked as fact based questions so this finishes our multifactorial inheritance next we come to trinucleotide repeat disorders they are also considered to be a type of non mendelian inheritance trinucleotide repeats can normally sometimes exist in the genome but if they are not amplified or they are not over expanded they do not produce any problem these disorders they arise due to expansion of particular trinucleotide repeats like suppose there is a trinucleotide repeat known as caa suppose caa is present only caa then caa caa it may remain benign for for uh, in some of the individuals but if this caa 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 it gets repeated like this and there are 10 15 50 100 200 copies of these are produced it will produce a unstable region it will produce unstable dna leading to increased risk of mutations as well as specific manifestations and this is what underlies the genetic basis of these trinucleotide repeat disorders a particular set of disorder is associated with a particular repeat happening in a gene product so the typical examples it is very important you can expect some question to be asked from this in one of the exam so on one side we'll write disorder then there will be trinucleotide repeat we'll write the gene product and the corresponding inheritance first of all we have the common variety that is fragile x syndrome we will be discussing fragile x syndrome in details but it is uh, a condition which is inherited it shows x linked recessive condition and it is a common cause of intellectual dysfunction that is mental retardation in children fragile x syndrome arises due to repeats involving cgg gene product the gene pr uh, product which is present is fmr1 protein and inheritance is x linked recessive second we have the huntington's disease where trinucleotide nucleotide repeat is cag the gene product the protein produced is huntington and it shows autosomal dominant inheritance the third example is myotonic dystrophy also written as dystrophia myotonica the trinucleotide repeated is ctg it codes for the product protein that is myotonin protein kinase and it is also a autosomal dominant inherited condition fourth we have friedrich ataxia where gaa nucleotide repeat is seen it codes for protein called as frataxin and inheritance is autosomal recessive and eventually we have spino cerebellar ataxia particularly varieties like 1 2 3 6 and 7 they are the ones which are commonly considered to be trinucleotide repeat disorders most varieties of spino cerebellar ataxia you have cag uh, trinucleotide repeat which produces the gene product which is abnormal is ataxin and the inheritance seen in these patients is autosomal dominant so these are the typical examples of trinucleotide repeat disorders